So I think we're off to a pretty good start. Huh? <laughs> and uh, Dean's talk was state of the art, and then we had a chance to hear this collaboration. I really find collaboration between Janie and Mary Liz, and I'm going to be introducing Mary Liz now. I've had a chance to hear her now three times play the piano. And she has a way of penetrating to the depths of the soul when she plays. It's really quite amazing. What's also uh, remarkable is that she was trained as a concert organist. And in her 20s and her 30s especially, she was traveling uh, internationally and giving organ recitals. She's also a very gifted and prolific composer of choral and chamber music. And she's involved, she's taking, uh, playing a role in this new exciting project. I think I have uh, the term right, embodied leadership in intimacy, or with intimacy and artistry. And uh, I haven't seen Mary Liz do this, but she does a kind of voice work where people uh, sing in very intimate ways, and then through the intimate singing, they step into the unknown and drop very deeply into vulnerable spaces. It sounds like really extraordinary stuff. And um, let's see, I mean, I could mention a lot of things that Mary Liz does, but one of the most interesting is that she is collaborating with the distinguished cosmologist Brian Swim on a multimedia project which they're calling, I believe, Song of the Earth, is that right? Universe. Song of the Universe. I'm <laughs> let's, not, let's not restrict things. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I think Mary Liz uh, is going to uh, uh, give us a musical interlude with some, with some themes. And I have to say that, um, you know, as fine a musician as Mary Liz is, she is one of the finest human beings I know. So, Mary Liz. Well, there's uh, nothing like being seen and heard. And Toby, the way you introduced me, I, I'm already almost in tears. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would like to just take us on a little bit of a, a musical journey. Uh, I'd like actually to invite all of us to sing to begin with. And uh, I, I just wanted to say something about singing in our culture and the way that um, it's actually been marginalized so in so many ways. I think I teach a lot of children and um, I'm always very aware of their voices. And, uh, and when I teach adults, often there will be stories that, that go something like this. Well, when I was um, eight years old, I was told I couldn't join this choir because I was tone deaf. And, and as these adults have grown from children into adulthood, their voices are still hidden. And I think um, the way that, although I have been trained as a professional musician, the way that our arts have marginalized, or in a way have, have been so specialized that we've lost some of the spontaneity and joy. And along with that comes creativity. So I'm very, very um, wishing that uh, we can actually join, join together to begin with in uh, a piece of music. And uh, I want to also say that there is permission when we do sing together. We do this at Kalanish all the time so that uh, you don't have to sing if you don't want to. It's your choice. You can sing if you would like. You can join however you want to, and that's, that's very, very important to know that this is your choice in whatever way you want to use your voice and music. So the um, piece is uh, one that we do often. Some of you know that here, and it's called Om Guru Om. And I wanted to describe that. And the person that wrote this piece, his name is David LaChapelle, and uh, he passed away about six years ago. And he was a modern day troubadour, and he'd carry his guitar on his back, and he had kind of scruffy hair, and we'd meet together, and he would use music as a gateway into uh, 
explorations, internal explorations. So his way to go through was through, in, through music. And so some of these chants he created for that very reason. So I would also like to invite us, after we sing for a few minutes, to go into a little period of silence together and uh, just to notice how you are on this beautiful day in this beautiful room. And just to check in with yourself without judging anything. Just check in, see how you're doing. And then you'll hear the little ting chaws ring at the end of this, and then I'll continue on. Does that sound okay? Okay, so here's Om Guru Om. <laughs> uh, on my uh, top 10 is the top, number one. <laughs> so it um, means Om, as you may know, is like the primordial sound of the universe. Yeah, oh. And it's on either side, it's couched on either side of the word guru. When you take guru apart, when you actually separate it, GU means darkness and RU means light. So the actual marriage of dark and light is within the meaning of teacher. And I just find that absolutely extraordinary. So the way that I would invite you to sing this is to um, imagine, or not even imagine, just remember your experiences, how they are shaping you. And also, if there is an external teacher, someone that you care deeply about, uh, you may want to uh, bring him into awareness too, or her into awareness, however you want to use that. Then the next phase of the phrase of that is Jaya Guru Dev, J-A-Y-A, -A, Jaya Guru Dev, D-E-V. And Jaya is a term of a celebration. And often in our voices, that sound, ah, ha, ah, ah, it's, it's like, Ha, ah, you know, it's this, this celebration of sound, ah, and jaya is all about that to me. And then dev is the, um, a word of endearment. So it's, it's both this and it's this as we sing about guru. So I would like to just teach that to you, and we'll do this for a few minutes and then go into silence, and then I'll continue on. Okay? Yeah, okay. So here's what it sounds like.
I'd like to read a poem by Kirsten Anderson, a young woman who came on one of our retreats. <clears throat> and this will lead into the next piece of music that I would like to play for you. This is called For the Record. You arrived, tattered and torn, bursting at the seams, spilling forth an account of this body, four long years, 1,452 days, narrated across thousands of pages by countless doctors in Vancouver, Montreal, Seattle, Texas, all describing the unfortunate young lady, an anxious 32-year-old, with no history of illness, thin and pale, a sizable mass in the chest, unusually aggressive disease, no known cure worldwide, palliative chemo for this tragic case. Am I tragic? These words have been dictated, transcribed, typed, and now delivered to me in a ragged envelope, arriving with the flyers and bills lying beside me in bed this morning. GPs, surgeons, oncologists, endocrinologists, radiologists, hematologists, all have had their way with my body. It's blood, it's marrow, it's developing cells, telling a story seemingly hopeless and futile, sad and tragic until now. Uh, I witnessed uh, this young woman in shock when she first came on retreat in a state of over overwhelm, really, with a diagnosis that just came out of nowhere. And I actually would venture to guess that in this room, each of us, maybe not so extreme, but each of us has met our meeting or will meet some challenge and that really, in my opinion, defy easy answers. How do we enter into these kinds of challenges? And I um, have a piece of music that was given to me, gosh, half a dozen years ago anyway, by a good friend. And um, she said, I think you're going to like this. And I really like it because what it does, it actually takes us through that kind of experience. So beware. <laughs> it's not the pretty side. <laughs> um, but I think sometimes the arts can address some of these challenges more easily or at least differently rather than face on conversation. So this is one way of entering into um, what might, be, might appear to be very challenging. So how this goes, it's about five minutes long. And the first section of it is a beautiful melody. And then that melody begins to disintegrate. It just goes into absolute chaos. And it gets very, very loud and rumbly. And then at the end of this, even when you think that there's no way through, <laughs> when you think it's not possible, then all of a sudden, what does, what does the listener hear? What does the player hear? The melody again. And that melody comes back. But this time, when the melody comes back, you hear at least I, I hear it, very, very differently than at the very, very beginning. So to me, if, if we want to put it into metaphor, it's very, it's very similar. I don't know about you, but in my life, when I have met challenges that are very, very difficult, I'm not the same person I was. And yet, that eternal, that unencumbered spot of grace that Mark Nepo talks about remains all the way through, no matter what. So that's what this piece conveys. And I just wanted to share that with you.
that peace does a lot of things, but um, it also has a way of holding. And just to um, end this portion of our afternoon together, <clears throat> I just wanted to tell a, a quick story about um, a horse and the way a horse held me um, with um, all the grief that I was carrying. And uh, then I wrote a piece that I would just like to play. And this, this was an equine leadership program out actually not too far from here, here in West, in West Marin. And uh, I was asked to go into this corral. Uh, there was a human coach, but there was also a horse coach. And uh, so this horse and I went into the corral and, uh, to discover what our relationship was. And I, we kind of you know, sort of sussed each other out. And then I went over closer to Toyota. And Toyota just, you know, just nonchalantly chewing, munching on some grass and didn't pay much attention to me. And then I started to touch him and um, found myself just laying my body over his body on the side because their hearts, you know, are enormous, literally. They emanate out many, many feet. Um, and so I lay down on, on his body, and all of a sudden I just started crying and crying and crying. And, I real, and, and what happened was over all these years of, of working with people through the Kalanish way, um, these people started to come, they came rising up out of my body. And, and it was as though Toyota, I know this sounds very strange, but it was as though Toyota said, here, I will take your sorrows. I will hold you with all that you, you know, all that you are giving me. I, I'm, I'm here. And what that did was it, it allowed me to understand that I actually can be held as well as holding. It, it was... Um, <laughs> Leave it to Toyota to do that, but it was I, I, I am so grateful to him to this day. And so the piece that I wrote is called Lay Your Head Down, and uh, that will be the end of this time together. But just to bring that spirit of the way that we can hold and be held for one another in community. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you.